welcome to the worship service of the First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois. Located just two blocks west of Tower Square near downtown Marion, this vibrant and energetic church meets weekly for high-energy, Christ-centered services. Enjoy the warm fellowship of the First Baptist family. We pray God's Spirit will be evident in our service and that you will want to come and see what First Baptist of Marion is all about. You're going to get just a little taste of, uh, of it today. And she has uh, her son, Solomon, is in the nursery or somewhere. And uh, so we are thrilled to have them with us today. So we're going to worship together as a family, right? Amen. Let's stand together as we lift our voices with one of our favorite Christmas carols, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let's pray together. Father, truly we are here to worship you, and we worship your son who came to this earth, and we're celebrating, Lord, uh, his birth through this season, and we just thank you, Lord. What he grew up to be was what the angels said he was going to be, our Savior, our Lord, our King. Glory, glory to your name. Bless us now, Lord, and if there is anyone here that doesn't know you personally, not for sure, uh, where they're going to spend their eternity. I pray that today would be the day that they would accept the Savior into their lives, that they might be saved. We give you the praise because you are worth it. In Jesus' name, amen. We are so glad that you have joined us in worship here at the First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois. And we want to welcome not only you, but all of our uh, uh, watchers on television. And I wish all of you could... Uh, uh, get a chance to read some of the letters that come in. Uh, some of them not so much, but most of them are uh, 
those letters are just how I talk, you know, and, and, and you all know that. Uh, but, uh, uh, but we're just so glad that you're here today. We're glad that they do tune in each week, and uh, they are part of our family here. So let's welcome one another in Christian love and fellowship as you are welcome at First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois. <laughs> great fellowship this morning. As you're being seated, we're going to uh, check out where we stand on our international missions offering, our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And I was looking around today, kids, where are our kids? We got some kids here today. I can't, I couldn't find him. He's, he's always here somewhere, but I looked around and I didn't See him, I'm talking about Carl the Christmas Sloth. What was that again? <sighs> oh my goodness. Look at Carl the Christmas Sloth has climbed up a tree. We don't have that many, well, we have a few more trees in here today than we usually do, but Sloths climb trees, and there he is. Oh, my goodness. He's up in the tree. Carl, how are you today? Let's I'm see if you can. Fine. He's fine. Uh, Carl, why did you climb the Christmas tree today? I wanted to see Jamie. <laughs> I am a big fan. She, he's a big fan of Jamie because Jamie is international star. You know, she goes all over the world singing. Japan loves her, and we love her even more. And we had her first. And <laughs> well, Carl, we're going to see where we stand on our Christmas offering. For those of you who are with us for the first time, we earn the right to sing the lyrics to the carol, Joy to the World, according to how much we give toward our goal, which is 23, $23,000 this year for our Lottie Moon goal. So let's see where we are in our goal today. was going so well. We encourage you to give cheerfully. I read that in a book somewhere, Pastor. Cheerfully 
to this offering that goes exclusively to foreign uh, international missions. And so we, uh, we encourage you to give, give, give to Lottie. Uh, give, I think, Carl, don't we say give lots to Lottie? C. There he is. Well, I promised you we would have a special guest today, and we do. Her name is Jamie Paul, and she is with us. She was with us last night at the Marion Civic Center. How many of you were, were in the audience last night at the center? Oh, fantastic, wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the concert just even half as much as I did. It was beautiful, a beautiful evening with a beautiful lady with a phenomenal voice and something that Marion can be proud of, one of our own. So we would like to welcome, I would ask that you help me welcome Jamie Paul to the stage. <laughs> Jamie, we're going to give you just a couple minutes to say what, if you'd like to say something to the folks. Oh, well, you don't want me to do that. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Now, Brian, thank you so much for having me, and you know, thank you to everybody who came out last night, and, and I know that the wedding was spectacular, Miss Vaughn, so thank you for providing these lovely decorations and the biases and everything, and, and listen, it's just very, 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 very special to be back home, and this choir, you guys, you have a jewel, a jewel up here on stage. And um, so we're going to do one of the songs that we did last night from the show. And so in Nashville, you know, Christ Church is where I go. We have a big Christmas concert every year. And so this is the song that I sing with my home church choir down there. But this will always be my home church choir. So we're going to do it here for you this morning. It's called Do You Hear What I Hear? Shepherd boy, 
Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate that so much. Thank you, Clar. You done good. <laughs> What a joyous time it is at Christmas time. It should be one of our favorite times of the year. Christmas and Easter is when we as Christians should rise to the occasion to celebrate. And that's what we're doing today. Let's rise to the occasion with the choir, if you would, as we sing another carol of Christmas. Oh, come, let 
brightly shining. This is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill Turn with me to Luke, the first chapter, because today our message is entitled, What Can We Learn from Mary About Jesus Today? Beginning with Luke, the first chapter, verse number 26, the Bible says, Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is, how, this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray together. Father, teach us about Jesus today. Lord, yes, we, we teach from the relationships that he had, but Lord, 
um, as we see your son Jesus from Mary's point of view today. Help us, Lord, to be able to learn how we should see Jesus, how we should love Jesus and serve him. And like Mary and all of the others involved in the Christmas story, they all had to make the decision for themselves whether to be in relationship with you as God or just a man. And Lord, we pray that everybody that can hear my voice right now will know and believe and confess that you are God in Jesus name. Amen. Well, today we're going to be focusing again on this Christmas story, but we're going to be looking at what can we learn about Jesus from Mary? Uh, and we will talk about that in context with uh, the relationship. The first thing that we learn is, we learn that being called by God to serve is a blessing. If you go back and look at verses 26 and 28, you will know, notice that the angel Gabriel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. So God's messenger told her these things, and I want you to know that the reason that she was blessed was because of the call. It was not because she was perfect, because you may look at Mary and say, oh, Mary was perfect, of course she could do anything. No, nah, she was just like us. She was striving to be faithful. She is to be highly respected by us because of what she did, but she was a young lady wanting to serve her God. She was highly favored because she was called to a unique and a specific ministry, and that was to be the mother of the Messiah. And our unique calling, is too, is a, is a gift from God. And he uses it to bless us for his purposes. The favor and blessing only comes when we agree to be used. We're going to see Mary doing that in, in, in a few moments, but when we are called by God to do what God wants us to do, and we say, here I am, Lord, send me, then that's where the favor and the blessing comes from. Because you see, uh, whenever God gives us a call, God's messenger Gabriel let Mary know that the Lord was with her to empower the call. She asked a very good question. When Gabriel said, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus, I'm paraphrasing here a bit, but Mary basically said, how can I become pregnant when I have not done what is required to be in that condition? That was a good question. And what Mary was called to do could not have been accomplished by her own power. Virgins do not have babies naturally. And you can do, you know, you can go and do studies and stuff. Well, this is how it could have happened. No, it was a miracle. Just believe it. You see, a lot of people want to explain everything. I want to give you a little hint on miracles. If you can explain it, it ain't a miracle. Okay? God said it would be done. It was done. That's what real miracles are. And so we need to understand that our application to this is, is that our call to serve God is a blessing. The call to fellowship with God through service is a highly favored position. And you're thinking, well, you know, I haven't got much to offer God. God doesn't need much because it does not based on your merit. It's not based on your abilities. It is based on your availability. You see, when we agree with God and we're willing to be available, he says, look, I can do anything I want through you, just like he did Mary. Mary could not have done that. Listen, folks, if you got a daughter and she comes and gives you that story, I'm sorry. And that's the way they felt around her because Mary had to give up a lot to accept this agreement. Again, I'll talk about that more in a moment. But the call to serve is accompanied by God's power to accomplish the task. And what he wants you to say is, I am available. So many, want to want, so many people want to tell God what they can't do. Well, you know, uh, I believe God called me to be a pastor. I believe God called me to be a missionary. I believe God called me to be a, a, a medical doctor who, who he wants to send on mission someplace. But I can't do that. 
God's saying, what? That's the same deal Moses did. Moses, you know, he comes and calls Moses and says, I want you to go and, and tell Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses said, well, I can't do that. I don't speak well. And God, you know, he has the right to get ticked off every once in a while. And he kind of got ticked off at Moses when he did that. I created your tongue. I can speak to you through you if I want to. I have to confess to you, and I have confessed at this altar before many times. I told God when he called me to, to be a pastor that I could not. I can't do that, Lord. I can't be a pastor. You know, that. it doesn't matter what I can do or can't do. It's not dependent on me, except for my availability. If God wants me to do something, it will occur in his power and not my power. God informed me that my ability to accomplish a task is irrelevant to his call to empower his will to be done. So you have no excuses. I remember, and you've heard me tell the story, but I'm going to tell it from a different slant this time. When I was in my mid-20s, I had a pastor, his name was Bill, and Bill was old school. Bill was the kind of guy that uh, if he were going to teach me how to swim, he would throw me off of a yacht in the middle of the ocean and say, swim. I mean, that was his way of doing it. So we were out witnessing, and we had this, we had this plan. We had this design of how this was supposed to go. We would knock on the door. We would go in. We would sit down. Bill would begin to talk to the people about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I would sit there quietly and pray for pastor to be able to share the gospel with those folks. And that's the way it worked for, you know, several months. Until that one night that we walked in. We sat down. Bill began to talk. I began to pray, oh, Lord, please speak through your servant, Pastor Bill. Please give him the words. And then I heard him say, well, we're so glad that uh, you let us come into your house tonight. Uh, Bobby's got something he wants to tell you here. <laughs> I didn't sign up for that. We come in. We sit down. I pray for Bill. He talks. That's the way it works. But let me tell you something. My fear of witnessing did not hamper God in the least in speaking through me that night. It was a couple younger than us, younger than me, not Bill, but younger than me. And so I began to tell them my testimony, and, and the visit went really well. And I learned something that I keep having to learn over and over and over again, is that if God calls me to do something, he will empower me to do it. It's him working through me, not me. It's not my merit. It's his merit. And so jump ahead many, many years. Many, many years. Matter of fact, jump ahead to about a month ago when we were in the Dominican Republic. My brother Ralph was there with me. We were on the evangelism team. And you know, the first place we went, we had over 120 people come through the evangelism station that day. That was, that was one of our easier days. The next day was 195. But, but one, we, we had about 100. So we, got, we, we had about 40 or 50 of them. And, and, and Ralph was sitting right by, there, right by me, you know. And we had only had one translator at that point. And Ralph was sitting there quietly praying for his pastor to talk. I did about 40 or 50 of them. And I started coughing. So the next one come up. And I said, hola. This is Ralph Walker. <laughs> he has something he wants to tell you. Then I said, go ahead and tell him, Ralphie. No, I didn't say Ralphie. I, I didn't say that, no. And I'm going to tell you something. Ralph looked at me funny for just a minute. And then he began to share the gospel. He began to share the gospel. Oh, you would have been proud of him. If you could... Yeah, if you'd have been proud of him. Let me, let me just show you that picture there. He is praying with this young lady. The, the translator is, is, is using his words. And here was one of the young ladies that he shared the gospel with. You see, Ralph learned what I learned and what you need to learn today. Stop telling God what you can't do if he's calling you to do it. Because if he calls you to do it, he will empower you to do it. 
And the next day, this actually is the next day after uh, Ralph started the day before, because the next day Ralph had his own translator and had his own little group over here. And uh, uh, I had just a minute, and I took that picture because I was so proud of my brother because he was letting God work through him. You see, one of the greatest blessings of Christmas is that God's gift to believers is his call for you to serve him. And I don't know exactly what that means for you. It's a little bit different for everybody. I guarantee you that none of you are going to be asked to be the mother of, uh, of the Messiah. That's already happened. We don't need that one to happen anymore. But it will be special and unique because God made you. He put you together. He knit you in your, in your mother's womb to be exactly who you are and exactly where you may find yourself. If you are in the will of God, wherever it is that you find yourself during the day, that is where God has called you to be a missionary. Guess what? I can't be everywhere that you guys are going to be because you guys have unique places that God has called you to. So you learn how to be used by God wherever you're at and stop making excuses what if mary said well you know what that's not on my calendar you know you know maybe you got the wrong person maybe are you sure you want the messiah born now this doesn't seem like a good time oh you know that that's humorous but it also speaks to us because I struggled with that myself. God, I have a teaching license. I am a teacher. Lord, I have tenure and a retirement plan. I mean, even in my mid-20s, I was thinking future, you know. I'm thinking about it more now, but I was thinking future then. Mary's initial call was to agree with God to be the mother to the son of God she didn't know what all that meant but I will tell you this when you agree to receive that gift it will bring you joy beyond anything you could imagine because I wish I had a picture of the first one that got saved when Ralph was sharing with them the picture of joy is awaiting you as you let God do the very same thing through you in the place where he may have you. Kind of reminded me of the song that we can't sing all the way through yet, uh, Joy to the World, but I can read some of the lines of it. This particular line goes like this, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. That's the phrase. Let every heart prepare him room. You see, we have to give him room in our hearts. We have to invite him in. We have to say, there is room in the inn, in, in me. There is room here for you, Jesus, to come in and allow your Holy Spirit to dwell. For, for my body to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let every heart prepare him room. In passing, though, let me tell you what Gabriel, you know, we're, we're kind of focusing on Mary, but listen to what Gabriel said about Jesus. He said that Jesus is Savior, and he was kind of talking future tense, he's going to be, but we know that Jesus is Savior. The word Savior uh, literally means Yahweh saves. It is the same name as Joshua in the Old Testament, and it's given to our Lord because we find out later, uh, Gabriel told uh, Joseph, he saves his people from their sins. Jesus is Savior. We learned that from Gabriel. And we learned it from the experience that Mary had because she, he was laying it out. He said Jesus is great. That word in the Greek is megas. We get the word megaphone from that word. We get the word uh, mega deal. You ever seen those commercials? Oh, it's a mega deal. Come get it. Now let me tell you something. Jesus is a mega deal. He is the most mega deal that we could ever imagine. Matter of fact, he is greater than a Tony Tiger size great. How many of you know who Tony Tiger is? Okay. Uh, Tony, if he were here, he would say that Jesus is great. 
that's kind of getting at the great that this mega would encompass. He said Jesus is the son of the highest, Luke 1, 35, uh, down a little further than I read. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. So he is savior, he is great, he is the son of the highest, he is king, and his kingdom will reign, he will reign forever, and his kingdom will last forever it will never end so serving God through Jesus means the greatest of blessings and the very purpose we were created for a life lived apart from our purpose misses the mark that doesn't mean everyone's called to be a vocational person like uh, Brian and I are and, and others on the staff like like Madison and Carol but what it means is that your calling has to do with how you were created and who you were created you may never have had the opportunity to serve your country in the military. I didn't. But I'll tell you what, every one of you, once you get saved, you have the opportunity to sign up for the Lord's Army. We sing a little song like that. Uh, I'm marching in the Lord's Army as a kid. You see, we are in his army. Ephesians 6, 12 and 13 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Let me tell you something. You may say, well, I'm too frail to do anything for the Lord. I'm telling you what, we got some people in this building. We've got some people in our church that whenever they get on their knees to pray, the devil trembles. You, and they, you, they may be thinking, my physical body is frail, but their spirit to do spiritual battle is, is exciting. And when they pray, you know that God is listening. We get to serve the saving king, the great king, the son of the most high king. In fact, we get to serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And God has plenty of blessings and favor to hand out to those who are available. So the, so the prayer is, the question I guess to ask is, have I made myself available? And the prayer is, Lord, I am available. And I'm not going to be afraid because you have said in your word, like you said to Mary, that there's, there's nothing impossible for you. Nothing. Nothing is impossible you. See, since there is nothing impossible, that brings us to the next part. We learn the way to answer the call by God to serve. So we, we understand that the call of God is a blessing. It was a blessing to her. That's what made her blessed and highly favored. But now we learn the way to answer the call is how she did in verse 37 and 38. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. We answer the call with confidence in God and conviction that his word is our command, not his wish. He doesn't do wishes. His word is our command. Mary's response was a classic response of humble commitment and willing obedience. Confidence comes through faith in believing with God. Nothing will be impossible. As I said before, Mary knew enough about the facts of life to know that what it takes for a baby to grow in the womb of a, of a woman. She realized as she believed that nothing was impossible for God, that this could happen. Think about what Gabriel knew about God. You know, Gabriel, the, Gabriel angel means messenger. And, and when Gabriel come, he was giving the message of God. But think from the perspective. He had stood in the presence of God. He experienced the wisdom and love and power of God exerted in countless ways. He knew that he is God who created a hundred billion galaxies plus. He is God who created the code of life, DNA, that would produce a sloth as well as a swan, as well as a snail. He is God who could just say so, and a woman who had never been with a man could have a baby that was born the Son of God, the Most High. Some of you need to hear that message out there and in here that nothing will be impossible for God. Now, God's will is not always your will. It doesn't say that, that God will do anything he, that you want him to do. That, that's not the way it works. 
The way it works is for you, when God calls you, to say, okay, God, I don't see how in the world this is going to work, but I believe you. I put my faith in you, and I'm just going to let you do through me whatever it is that you want to do. God doesn't need for you to take the slack. It's like a little kid, you know, and you've heard me use this illustration about my dad before, but it's like when we were little kids and, and we wanted to help our parents lift things. Well, we couldn't because we were little. Our muscles had not matured to the point that we could do that. And so the parents would say, oh, come on and help me. And they are bearing all of the weight and lets us walk along helping and serving. Because our parents wanted us to learn how to help and serve. And our Heavenly Father wants us to learn how to help and serve. And he provides all the power. He carries all the weight. How many times? How many times? Did Mary wonder, what in the world's going on here? Mary had to give up her reputation to be the Messiah's mother. I mean, it's, it's bad enough in our day, but boy, back in their day, they could pick up stones and kill you for being pregnant out of wedlock. Mary had to give up her home to go to Bethlehem and have a baby. I mean, go to Bethlehem, nine months pregnant. I mean, come on. Lord, you sure about this? I've lived with a pregnant woman before, and I'm telling you, <laughs> it's interesting. I, mean, I know, it's a, it's a, it's a, I know they do, you do most of the work. I get that. I'm not being critical, but I'm telling you, maybe the Holy Spirit come on, you know, and, and, Took care of that too. I don't know. But uh, going to Bethlehem and then barely escaping with their lives and going on to Egypt to live for a while. I mean, she had to give up a life. I'm thinking Mary has probably had this dream of being a, being a, a, a wife and, and to have a family and settle down right in her hometown. And, and she knew, uh, you know, that uh, Joseph was going to be a carpenter and thought, man, this is going to be a great life, man. This is going to be cool. We're going to, you know, man, our future is planned. And then this angel shows up. And she had to give up a lot. And I just want you to know that when you are called by God, Yes, a lot of times there's going to be sacrifice involved. You're going to have to not do what you thought was your future. It's time for us as Christians to stop telling God what we want to do and, and bless it and start saying, I'm available, God. I will do what you want me to do. Behold the maidservant or behold the bondservant of, of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. How many times did Joseph have to say to Mary, Mary, remember, remember what he said. Nothing's impossible for God. We can, he's got this. He's got this. God. How many times did Mary have to remind Joseph, Joseph, <laughs> God's got this. Nothing is impossible for him. The video Mary asked the question of our series, what child is this? And she said, I was thirsty for the answer. I was thirsty for the answer. And she said, I continued to be thirsty for more. I don't want to talk about that too much because I was reading some medical evidence uh, uh, this the past week about if I talk about being thirsty, you, your brain, something clicks in it and you get thirsty. So I don't want to talk too much about being thirsty, uh, but uh, she says, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And then I got to thinking, you know, America, Americans love to celebrate holidays. Well, the, 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 Jews the, the Jews loved holidays too. Matter of fact, in the days of Jesus, when Jesus was a, an adult, they had this holiday that they, they, um, that they um, celebrated. It was called the Feast of Tabernacles, and it was such a cool holiday. It would be like Christmas, Easter, and, uh, and the Fourth of July all in one thing. I mean, it was just a cool thing. And one point in this Feast of Tabernacles celebration, the priest goes, and he uh, goes and, and dips some water out of the pool of Siloam. 
He takes actually a golden pitcher and he dips it in the pool and he carries it back to the temple. And there he pours that water out on the altar of sacrifice. And at the moment that the Levites would blow the trumpets, as he's pouring that water out, the crowd would cry out, With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation, which is a, a direct quote out of Isaiah 12.3. There would be leaping and dancing and, and, and shouting and singing and great hallelujahs would be fill the air. Well, one day, Jesus as an adult showed up at this thing. And as they were screaming out this, as it began to die down, Jesus said to all that could hear, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone thirsts, and everybody's going, what? What's this mean? We've drawn from the wells here of salvation. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me. See, Jesus is the well of salvation. That's what he was trying to tell them. Mary knew the name Yahweh saves. He knew, she knew the name that Jesus, whenever the angel said, in his name will be Jesus, what she heard was, in his name will be Yahweh saves. Oh, really? Hmm. You mean my baby? My boy? It's the one that's going to come and rescue our people and be my God? She said, I look back on that night and I remember when I was holding him, thankful to be his mother, I knew in my heart this would be no ordinary child. I am still thirsty, but I do believe I know where to find the living water. The truth means nothing until you believe it. But when you do, it will be joy to the world because you have prepared room in your heart to receive the king. What do we learn from Mary? We learn from Mary that the call of God is the blessing and favor. And we learn that to accept the call means that we say, Behold, the servant of God, be it unto me, according to your word. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me because I want you to think, and, and whether you're here or whether you're uh, watching by television or YouTube today, I want you to think about this. Is God calling you? He may be calling you to be saved. That's first and foremost on his mind because if you're not saved, then nothing else really matters because the Bible says in John 3 that, that you're condemned already. So if you're hearing his call today to be saved, then say, yes, Lord, I want to be saved today. You don't have to understand all of it right now. We'll help you do that. But the bottom line is, is you say, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you came to this earth as a baby. You grew up to live a perfect life. You died on the cross for my sins. You rose from the dead and that you are truly the Son of God. I believe that. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so if you believe in him and are willing to confess, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So that's the first call that you will get from him is to be saved, to be in relationship with him. If you aren't right now in relationship and don't know for sure whether you're going to heaven, then just pray and ask him to save you right now. Invite him to come into your life. Answer his call. Now, if you're a Christian here today and you know that you're saved, you, you don't have any doubt about that. You know you're saved. But as I've been talking about this call thing, Maybe you were like I was back in the day when I was sitting in the pew and God was saying, Bob, I have something I want you to do. I want you to be 
the pastor. I want you to proclaim my word. I want you to be my messenger. Don't say what I said. I can't. I can't. Of course you can't. But he can. So just say, Lord, I'm available for you to do what you want to do through me. And I'm going to realize the truth that I learned from Mary today. That when you call, you will empower your will to be done in my life. So today, where you are right now, the call to be saved, say, yes, Lord, I want to be saved. Please save me right now. If he's given you another kind of call, say, yes, Lord, I am available. Tell me what it is you want me to do. And I will trust that there's nothing impossible for you to do through me. So the invitation today is to hear the call of God and respond, yes, Lord. Father, today, as we come to this time of invitation, Lord, Christmas is such a wonderful time when we remember when you sent your son Jesus into the world. Best gift ever. But Lord, we really can't unwrap it until we prepare room in our hearts for your son to be there. So Father, today, please, 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 let everybody that needs to be saved be saved today. Lord, call them. Call them loud. And those that you're calling to be missionaries wherever they're at, I pray, Lord, that even right now, many are praying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I pray, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven during this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.